began this series on the Choctaw by blood African Indians when the dolls rolled, I thought it would contradict the statement by Terence Bixby that there were numerous cases on the road in the Choctaw Nation. What I'm discovering is that, in fact, there may have been a lot more than meets the eye in regards to the classification of Negro Indian. In my opinion, Tams Bixby was trying to justify the five tribes and the Dawes Commission excluding individuals who also possessed Choctaw or Indian blood from their father. He did this by affirming the numerous enrollment cases of individuals who possessed Choctaw or Indian blood through their mother and made her children superior to the children by a woman of African descent. It was and is that attitude that ignores a basic principle of genealogy and science. We possess the blood and DNA of both parents. This practice was nothing more than continuing the stigma of slavery for the children of Indian men and black women. Their decisions may have also had the effect of separating families literally and figuratively by blood. You will recall my last subject, Nancy Ishkama Shills, was the product of an Indian mother and a colored man by the name of Nelson Ishkama. It was unfortunate that both of Nancy's parents were deceased at the time of the Dawes enrollment process, but the 1885 Choctaw Census for Indians only provided some very important information on her parents. Locating this information required some old-fashioned genealogical tricks to uncover the two, but I'm fairly confident I have identified Nancy's father in 1885. Again, as a genealogist, I had to proceed on the available information to narrow my search. The information on Nancy's enrollment card provided many leads. From the card, I knew she resided in Jacks Fort County in Otoka, Indian Territory, circa 1899. Her card states Nancy and her children received their 1893 tribal enrollment payment in Gaines County, Indian Territory. The card further informs me about Nancy's mother, Martha Ishkamer, who resided in Blue County, Indian Territory, Choctaw Nation. Information on the card tells me Nancy's husband was Jack Shields, a colored man, demonstrating Nancy may have begun to identify herself and her children, both as Choctaw or Negro Indians. Oddly enough, there were other individuals enrolled by the Dawes Commission who had a father by the name of Nelson Ishkamer, but on their cards, Nelson was described as a Choctaw Indian, and these enrollees were listed as full bloods. The flag went up on this one, but I had to dig to determine if there was more than one Nelson Ishkamer and if these were Nancy's siblings. It is practically impossible for us today to say what the situation was for this family and we can only get a glimpse of their life through the documents available without some oral or written history that possibly is in the hands of present day family members. However, a lot can be gleaned from what is available and this family was quite surprising in what information I was able to gather in an effort to determine how they navigated the complex social and cultural landscape that was Indian Territory in Little Dixie, Oklahoma. As I stated, there were other individuals listed with the surname of Ishkamer, which amounted to only 10 people on the final Dawes roll. Clearly, anyone with this name is highly likely to be related, but I know better than to assume information that is not corroborated by documentation. I mentioned earlier how the 1885 Choctaw Indian only census could be useful in determining the family of Ishkamer and Shields. In order to identify family members as genealogists and family historians, we utilize the information we have and work backwards to locate family members. Utilizing that principle, I took the names of everyone named Ishkamer and looked for them approximately 15 years earlier in the 1885 census. Recall, 
The area where Nancy and Jack Shields lived was listed as Atoka, Indian Territory, in Jack Forks County. Nancy was shown to be living in Gaines County in 1893. When you look at the four cards for the other Ishkamers, their cards have them living in areas known as Alikchi, Indian Territory, in Neshoba County, as well as Lukfada, Indian Territory, in Baktuklo. The information required me to look in all of these counties in an effort to locate the parents of everyone and attempt to corroborate a connection to each other. The 14-year span between 1885 census and the Dawes enrollment meant that people, though living in a rural lifestyle, were not tied to one location, and in order to put these pieces together, this was going to take more work than I initially thought. I believe the effort was rewarded. My research efforts had me going from Gaines County to Blue County, from Atoka to Jack's Fork, and making my way through the census information of Baktuklo to Neshoba. A lot of pages to turn just to see if Tam's Bixby assertion could be proven true. What I discovered on pages 21 and 20 of Neshoba County census offered some very interesting information. Despite the fact these records were supposed to be enumeration of Indians only. There were several instances of colored individuals enumerated on them. One might assume an Indian is an Indian. I have come to recognize intermarried whites as Indians on the Dawes Rolls. I'm increasingly discovering there are Negro Indians and they were considered citizens as well. In the 1885 census for Neshoba County, Choctaw Nation, what you see is the clear indication that Nelson Ishkamer was listed as colored. It also appears at one point he was noted as being an Indian, but it appears attempts were made to remove that designation. Is this more segregation of the tribes along racial lines, and could Nelson Ishkamer have been mixed blood himself for the short and inadvertent inclusion of him as a Choctaw Indian? So it would appear, the nine people enumerated in Neshoba County with the surname Ishkamer, except for Nelson's wife, Ishtoyapi, were African Indians. This is in direct conflict with the information on the Dawes cards of every child of Nelson as they are listed as full-blood Choctaw Indians. You might be thinking, what about Nancy? What is her story in 1885? Well, Nancy is a lot more elusive to find in the 1885 census, but it was something else that got my attention and brought another major revelation to the story of culture, community, and identity. Even if I could not tie Nancy Ishkarma Shields to the Nelson Ishkarma in the 1885 census, that leaves open the question of how in 1899, the children of Nelson all became full blood Choctaw Indians. As I review the information and documentation on the Ishkamer Shields family, it is becoming obvious that individual members began choosing how they identified themselves and who they identified with. I'm of the opinion that in the subsequent years, the Shields family became more entrenched in the culture of blacks, whereas the Ishkamers, by claiming to be full blood Choctaws, removed the taint of Nelson Ishkamer as a colored man.